Hey everyone, this is Pig for Life, and today I'm doing a video review for Mastermind Creations R02 Talon, Mastermind's version of Predacon's um, Dive Bomb. Okay, so let's just get started as usual with packaging review. And you should be very familiar with this packaging by now. Um, this is Mastermind Creations or MMC's reformatted packaging with, and with the Predacons in particular the same kind of grid line with the CG render on the front. And the sides all kind of have the same R02. It has Mastermind Creations R02 Talon. A little image on the side here. Same thing on the other side, just a different render at the bottom this time. And then on the back, we get basically the same um, image that we've seen before. We have the same Predacon except each time we see Talon, or sorry, each time we see the figure in this box um, colored while the rest is all kind of like um, grayed out. And then we see some nice product images, actual product images um, surrounding that. On the top we get just another product image of Talon and on the bottom we get some warning labels and some information on how to find Mastermind Creations on their website and on Facebook. As we're as we become familiar um, we can actually open up and it has magnetic latch system that you can open up and have a nice window to display talent if you want to keep them in the box. And you can see a little bit of accessories, you see his nice beautiful wings, and on the inside of the cover we see some line art, which is really nice. So as always, the packaging has always been very solid with Mastermind Creations. Um, they do a very good job in terms of the quality of the box, but also just the design is all, has always been very nice. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox him. Open from the top, just slide him out. And again, as usual, we get that inner cardboard box that's protecting the clamshell. All right, just open that up. And we get a few things, we get the clamshell with the character in it. But then we also get the instruction booklet which doubles as a comic. So this is issue two. So uh, one thing to note is um, I did say R02 so it was supposed to be the second release in the series. But he actually um, was supposed to be the first figure of the Predacons, but he ended up being the fourth figure. And that's because of, you know, some reordering. I think they did some remolding and retooling of him um, to get everything right. And he's probably one of the more complicated figures, with the wings especially. So in addition to the instructions, we see what he comes with. He comes with the two laser daggers, the particle beam, sniper rifle, the um, Feral Rex Talon wings, the figure itself. But you get the instructions that explain how to get into bird mode, but also how to get him into arm mode. And then we see some concept art gallery for their upcoming Azalea, which is their version of RC. And then again, we get issue two of the comic. So you, you really weren't able to read much of this series because of the fact that issue two came out late. We do get the obligatory bio card with um, the now popular Unicron artwork. Unicron being the artist. And we get his stats. Nice plastic card, not cardboard or anything like that. The other thing that you get in this package are four pieces. So you get two of each of these pieces and these are elbow pieces for Bovis and Fortis. So one of their arms, I believe it was the right one on both of the figures, I'm sorry I'm trying to get a hold of these so you can see them, um, you get two of each of these. 
Uh, Bovis's and Fortis's arms were mismanufactured or mismolded, and that caused um, the right arm to have the same piece as the left arm, and that caused a lot of um, mushing of the ratchets. And so Mastermind was kind enough to package two replacement sets for each of the Bovis and Fortis um, arms, elbows. And basically you just replace them. You take out the pins, pretty self-explanatory, but if you guys want a video showing how to do that, um, I can do that as well. So it's nice that they included that with Talon. And let's zoom out. So again, you get a nice view of all the accessories. Let's just go ahead and unbox them. A little bit of plastic tape to protect the paint from rubbing on the container. And to get him out, you just need to fold his wings out just a little bit. And that allows you to pull him out. And then he has the laser daggers and the portable beam sniper rifle. Get that out of the way. And then we can actually go straight into robot mode review. So I always like to start off looking at the face sculpt or the head sculpt because I, I just like to show people what they're kind of getting into uh, as far as whether it's a good representation of the figure and, and, and the character itself. Camera does not want to focus today. So that is Talon or Dive Bomb and he has a nice red face that's inside this kind of helmet or almost headgear, it almost looks, you know, Native American headgear-ish. But as you can see, it's nicely painted red. The eyes are also kind of a, a metallic orange, which is kind of hard to pick up. Um, there, you might be able to see it there. It's pretty, it's a pretty uh, straight, non-emotional uh, face. But the one thing I will say is the, I, that I don't really like all that much come on camera focus for me there we go is uh, the nose is kind of long and pointy which I thought was kind of weird and, uh, when I look at him he kind of reminds me of the Joker from the Batman animated series I don't know why but the, he just does but all all of the feral cons have had kind of very um, non-emotional faces so it's in line with that since we're already up here I'm going to talk about the head a headdress I guess or helmet a little bit you can have it positioned two ways you can have it positioned kind of like this or you can have it positioned straight up if you do straight up you can actually push it and collapse it down so it looks like that you can't really pull it forward when it's like that but again you can pull it out and then down if you want to do that okay I kind of prefer it down so let's look at the rest of the figure in robot mode. And this is probably my favorite figure of all the Feral Cons, um, just to mess with, just because of the wings themselves. And I'm gonna talk about the wings separately, but um, the figure itself is really nice. Uh, it's nice quality plastic, as we've come to expect from the uh, Mastermind Creation figures. Their plastic's always really kind of unique it's always kind of like a satin, a dull, not super glossy, but not really flat um, type of plastic that's really, really hard, which is really nice. So here's a look at Talon from the front. Oops, the side. The back, which has nice, nice detail for the wings. Not a lot of junk going on. Back to this side, and to the front again. As far as articulation goes, um, his we'll talk about his wings separately, but his arms are nicely ratcheted both ways. He does have double jointed elbows, which help with transformation. He does have these guns that you can pull out, but are on swivel. 
He does have wrist articulation. So we can swivel that. He doesn't have any um, hand articulation. So no fist movement or finger movement, um, is, which is a, a point that I really kind of miss. Uh, I, I kind of wish that MMC had gone the extra mile to do that, uh, especially a figure of this size. I, I think it's kind of unacceptable, unacceptable not to have at least joints at the at the palm. But they haven't done that so far, so I wasn't expecting that. Waist articulation because of transformation, he can go all the way around. But he goes has two places, so he has at the lower waist here, but he also has one at the upper waist. And the reason why he has that is to facilitate the use of the ab crunch, which you see here. Which acts as the elbow, part of the elbow joint. So he needs to have that um, ability to turn both the upper and lower part. Okay. The legs are also nicely ratcheted. They don't go all the way forward 90 degrees, but they go pretty far back. They don't all go 90 degrees either. Um, it doesn't actually go that far, maybe 45 degrees before it starts getting interference from the hips. Okay. He does have this piece again. Uh, I, I never really liked this and they did something weird with this too. So usually they have holes on the side that will allow this to collapse in more, but this actually doesn't. And so it, it doesn't even seamlessly sit on there. So I actually keep him on the back and given that he's a pretty slender figure, I think it looks better to have the slender thighs. He does have articulation at the, at the claws on the knees, but that's really not necessary for a robot mode. And then he does have a lot of knee action. He has more than 90 degrees at the knee. He has kind of a upper knee, lower thigh swivel, which can go all the way around. And then he has the now familiar weird hinge ankle with ball joint for the foot, which I never really liked. I think it's great for posability, but it just looks really gappy from the side, but also depending on how you pose it from the front, you can see like all the way into his hollow leg. So it's a trade off but I, I never particularly liked it all that much. Um, some other things, he does have this kind of, um, I don't know, like tail piece, which I, I don't even know why they did it. I, don't, I didn't think it was necessary. I don't think it adds that much to either mode, but he, he does have that. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned that he has uh, upper bicep swivel as well. All right, so that's it for the main body articulation, except uh, I skipped the head, which is on a ball joint. And it's also on this uh, panel, which lifts up. Um, it really just facilitates the the arm joint and being able to move, move that around. But it is on a ball joint, so he does look up and down and has the head bobble, can do the exorcist. But yeah, that's really it for articulation there. The wings, I'm actually gonna take the wings off because they're, they're basically like a separate figure. So the wings are really nice. So they have so many points of articulation. So where to start? Well, let's start out all the way here. So the feather, each of the feathers are individually articulated at this point. So this one goes really far. This one goes a little bit. This one goes a little bit more. This one goes probably the least just a little bit down. But you have a lot of options with the, these feathers. You can have them splayed like this, or you can have them collapsed, but that's really nice. So at this joint, you can go straight out, even further than, I guess, straight, uh, and then you can collapse them, like 90 degrees, which is really nice. Uh, for this joint, there's a lot going on here, so there's a 90 degree joint. Let me back up a little bit. So there's a 90 degree joint here where they can go all the way up here, almost 90 degrees, both ways, which gives you a lot of range of motion. But in addition to that, they have a joint or like a hinge here, which is kind of loosely ratcheted, that gives you 
the ability to go more than 90 degrees straight up. And, well, actually, I guess it's 90 degrees, it's just, just that, that angle. From right here, you can see it's 90 degrees. So you get a lot of versatility here. You can go up, angled out, curve that back down, open the feathers, and putting them back on talon, uh, you use these four posts. You optionally can use the combiner joint, but I find that if you do it on um, on talon, it's hard to pull it off. So I don't actually use it, and these four posts are more more than enough to secure it. So you can get a lot of pose posability out of him when he's on here. Um, people kind of like to use his um, wings as almost kind of like a cape or cloak, which is a good idea. And being that he's a sniper, I saw a couple people on um, on the boards and Facebook kind of use this as almost like a sniper cover. Like he's, he'll be positioned down, he'll have his sniper rifle out. And he'll be looking, looking up. And this is supposed to kind of like camouflage him, which is a cool idea. And very in line with um, kind of what the character could be as a sniper. All right. So I already brought out his gun, which has a couple of options. So it it is a kind of a thin sniper rifle when you have it this back stock out, but you can also fold it up and I guess it can be just kind of a rifle, regular rifle, or I guess a kind. I guess it could be kind of a futuristic shotgun if you look at it that way. As always, you can just plug it in straight into the hand. And if you want, there's actually storage options elsewhere as well. So on the wings at the top, there are a couple slots here that you can use either of these handles to plug into. Do that one, or you can have it sit lower, you can sit higher, higher, you can flip it upside down. So again, a lot of options. I think the book instructions have it like that for the most part. And the laser daggers, which I, I don't really understand what that means, but uh, th these daggers are again pretty nice. The same kind of goldish plastic and it does have paint which is hard to tell because it's so close to the plastic on the blade area itself that it that is painted and you have options to where to store these because of the pegs on the side you can store them on the on the wings up here like that or over here kind of tight though but yeah you can get them in there you can do them on the side here of the jetpack if you'd like so you have a lot of options with these daggers. And as always, to get them in is always kind of a chore. So I basically put them in at an angle, and then rotate them. And then they're in. So same thing, kind of put it in at an angle. Rotate it all the way in and push down, and then you have them. So, there you have his um, robot mode review, and he's really nice. Again, I, I think he's the most fun to play with uh, in robot mode just because he has the wings and he has so, so much, so many options for display. Some people complain about the gray talons, uh, especially in arm mode, but I, I don't. I don't mind them. Um, Doctor Killinger has black ones that he's put on pre-order. So if you want some black ones, uh, you can go ahead and order through him. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy transformed. Take off the accessories. And the uh, sniper rifle. And you don't actually need to do uh, to take off the wings or anything like that. 
So what I'll first do is open up, move up the head and close up the face. Next I'm going to tuck the hands in to the forearms. And then you make use of these long tabs and these slots on the arms. So you use the double jointed elbow to get in like so. Press that in. Same thing on this side. Let's kind of get these wings out of the way. Again, making use of double jointed elbows. Tab that in. And then there's also tabs on the inside of the bicep that have corresponding pegs in the body, peg holes in the body. So you just need to rotate those in and push on both sides. Very easy. Okay. So moving down to the legs, what I first like to do is get the claws done. So just pull up the claws and then kind of zigzag them out. So again, pull the knees out. And while you're doing that, these two come forward while this middle one goes through and to the back. If you haven't, ro if you had these leg pieces out, um, just rotate them back and peg them in. And then we're going to come around to the back. So from the legs, you open up these panels, very familiar. And you're going to pass through the heel, just push it straight through. And this piece is going to peg onto here a little bit later, but uh, you need to you need to do something first. So just open that up, and you're going to rotate the leg all the way in. I'm going to close, tab that in. And now you can tab this piece in. I guess you can do that first, but I, I've always done that. So you, you, I guess you could push the heel in first, tab it in, and then open. Usually with the other figures, you always have to move like the knees or something like that. But I guess I, I forgot on Talon, he doesn't have those knees. So just rotate that through, close it up. All right, and the last thing you're gonna do is rotate it at the red part to get the hips in the right position and the claws and the legs facing the right direction. And that's it guys. That's it for transformation. Very quick and easy. Um, very simple. But pretty rewarding nonetheless, I guess. And looking at him and um, in bird mode, he doesn't look great. I mean, you can see that there's no real cohesive body thing here. It basically just looks like he has arms there. Um, the bird modes or flying modes often suffer and it's a trade-off for kind of a accurate robot mode. But I think they could have done a little bit better here. Some people have unpegged the arms and rotated them around like so. And I think this is an okay, like I guess, sorry, when you rotate the arms around, it does run into the wings. And this is an okay fan mode, I guess. It makes it, I guess, a little bit cleaner here, but then you kind of have these shoulders riding up. It's up to you how you want to display that. Um, you still have the option of the cannons going forward or you can point them down. So it's, it's, a, it's a decent alternate, but the official transformation does have them down like that. And again, sorry, it's because rotating the arms, the shoulders run into the, um, run into the wings. But again, you get a lot of posability out of the wings. Um, one of the things that you can do here, if you're displaying these guys in in um, alt mode, is if I can find there it is. You can take the chest piece that came with Leo Ducks 
and you can actually store them. So when he was in alt mode or um, robot mode, they, they really had nowhere to go in, unless you made the big sword. But you can actually take these and they have pegs here and here and you can actually plug these into these slots. Like so. And these are supposed to kind of act like, I guess, turbines or something like that. A, a pretty weak a pretty weak um, reason to have these here, I guess. They don't look all that out of place, I guess, but they don't look all that great either. But they're supposed to finally have some storage option for this. I don't really think it makes any difference at all whether you have those on or not. And as far as the wings, I didn't mention it before, but these wings are about 18 inches across from tip to tip when you have them spread out like this, which is pretty massive. All right, so as far as articulation in bird mode, um, he does have the hinge here for the leg, and then each of the talons are individually articulated, so they're not the same. Uh, these two aren't connected or anything like that. You do have some range of motion here, and you still can make use of that ab crunch. You still have some of the articulating tail. The head still is on that ball joint and you have that option of going up and down with the with the beak. You can open up his mouth. Hopefully I can get it. There we go. And you can have him squawking. But really, uh, I think this is probably the weak, weak mode for sure. And But if you have a flight stand, it's actually pretty fun to pose this guy as well. Alright, so to get Talon back into robot mode, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go back the way we did before. So the first thing I do is just go ahead and get the knees up and the claws through. Again, just pushing that middle Talon through the others and pushing the two front ones back and having it rest up there. Go ahead and rotate the red waist piece to get the crotch plate in the correct position. Open up the leg panels, and rotate the legs down. Close up the leg panels. So the, uh, they peg in with this big slot here and here. They go together. Unpeg the feet and rotate the heels through this joint, just straight through. No need to turn them like with with Bovis and Fortis. Okay. Um, again, the option you can rotate this thigh piece around, and it doesn't peg in anywhere. So, and it looks it has a funny color. Again, I don't know why they did that. I think it's pointless to have on this figure. Now dealing with the upper body, just pull the forearm out on both sides. There we go. Uh, unpeg the biceps from the, or the arms from the side of the body. Rotate the fist out, or the hands out. And then with the head, just reach in there if you can, or grab it from the side, and rotate the face down. And then do with the, again, the headpiece, however you'd like. Just for now, I'll, I'll do it the other way. And then we have Talon back in robot mode. All right. One thing I did want to show off now that we have, we've gone through most of the review, is you can take the, the wings off and plug them into, use the four posts or the combiner port as well. And you can bring in Leo ducks and he has four holes on the back as well as the combiner joint that you can plug this into and you can have a flying Leo ducks like so. Or if you get him into line mode, which I, I don't feel like go, transforming him into line mode to show that right now, but 
you you get the idea. It looks like his lion mode, but with wings, which is pretty cool. All right, getting him back out, and bringing Talon back in. So, final thoughts, guys. Here, there we go. So, final thoughts. Uh, I really like this figure. I think he's the most fun to play with out of all the, the Predacons or Pharaohcons, whatever you want to call them. Um, he has a lot of nice posability. He can be very dynamic and expressive. Not with his face, like I said, which is pretty bland, but with his wings, you can do kind of an upwards pose like that or yeah you just you just have so many options that i really like it and you can even do a pose like that so if you look at because of the weight of the wings you can have them lean pretty far forward and still be able to balance <laughs> he's doing the lean but like i said um for the price i mean i think he, he i think his wings and everything like that uh, where the cost of the wings were probably spread across or subsidized by the price of the, some of the other figures. I think he's well worth, you know, the price. I think he's somewhere in the $100, $100 range around there before shipping. And I think he's well worth it, more so than the other figures. I think all the other figures had more nitpicks that, that I wanted to pick out. Um, I think really he and... Um, and Leo Ducks probably are the ones that you get the most bang for your buck in terms of versatility. All right. So I, I did want to thank Capture Prey. Um, this is not a sponsored review, but um, that's who I got it from. And they always do a great job packaging and sending off the figures. So if you want to pick up one of these guys for yourself, uh, Click on the link in the description below and pick one up from Captured Prey or one of your other, other retailers. As always, if you like the video, um, please give it a thumbs up. Um, comment if you have any questions or, com uh, or, or, or concerns or anything. Just want to chit chat and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, and as always, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. Um, I've been working a lot with some of the vendors as well as some of the toy manufacturers to really get some more figures to show you guys and do reviews for you guys. Um, possibility of running some contests uh, have already been talked about, but it really depends on getting more subscribers and more views and everything like that. So please share the video if you if you like my reviews. Um, if you think I could do a little bit better in some areas or anything or a lot better in some areas, leave that in the comments too. I always appreciate the feedback. As always, um, you can always like me on Facebook, Pick for Life Reviews is the Facebook page, or PickForLifeReviews.com is the new website blog. And with that, I think we're all done for today. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good one.